up to look at all the different type of videos that come up. And then you just start creating your own version of them videos and put them on Instagram. Yeah. So, for example, how to teach your kids how to learn their sight words. How to teach your kids sight words. How to teach your kids to um, whatever, right? Uh, how to teach your the best books for your kids to start read, uh, reading. Um, the you see what I'm saying? Or uh, where to find books for your kids to read. Um, what other stuff can? What other questions these parents got that you can answer? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and start basically answering those and posting them through social media. So, okay, it's like building a sus the suspense. Mm -hmm. and then Not necessarily building the suspense. It's just like showing them you know what you're talking about. Okay. So, if you go, so if you go to our page, you might see a video that say, how to make your ads more profitable. Okay. Three things you should know before doing Facebook ads. Um, why most businesses can't scale. Um, the best type of video content to put out. If you're gonna use Instagram, here's how you use it to get clients. Okay. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Because I know people who watch my stuff, they wanna get more clients. They trying to learn Facebook ads. They are trying to learn Instagram ads. So we do videos giving them little tips. And they're like, hey, if you want my help with this, go do X, Y, Z, go click on this link to go get this, or go do this to get this. You see what I'm saying? Or TikTok ads, the same thing. So it's like, if somebody was a trainer, so, for example, you saw Jay last week, right? Yeah. So when I met Jay, I had actually hired him to be a trainer. But I ain't even going there and tell him what I did. He just ended up going to my page and ended up watching some videos and ended up watching a whole bunch of videos. So the next day he told me how he had hired, he had hired a whole bunch of marketing people to help him grow his fitness business, but none of it had ever worked. So he was, like, super hesitant. So I was like, all right. I wasn't trying to sell him nothing. And he was like, what tips would you give me? And I was like, Start creating a piece of video content every day. Because most people who personal trainers, all they do is like post pictures of them like with their shirt off and mm -hmm. the rips in their legs and them in the gym throwing up a whole bunch of weight. But I'm like, people who trying to get personal training, don't they don't want to see that because they can't even relate to that. They can't throw up that much weight. They ain't ripped like that. Mm -hmm. So what can you do? So then he was like, he'll make it do a video of like how to burn fat. Um, an app, a 10-minute app workout you can do. Um, how to work out even if you can't go to the gym. Um, you, you see what I'm saying? So he just started creating videos like that, and then his business blew up without ads. He was just doing the content, and his, his whole business just blew up. The, the best stuff to put in your smoothie. My favorite green smoothie recipe. So he just started doing stuff like that, and now people are like, okay, this dude know what he's talking about. What's up? That was you at. Does that make sense? Perfect. Perfect. So yeah, that's all you gotta do. You just start cranking, and then you just be like, hey, even if you don't got your system and everything set up yet, when you do your videos, you can be like, hey, if you want, if you ready to learn how to teach your kids, teach your kindergarten, because you you doing kindergarten what? So what what ages is that? Got it. So at the end of your videos, you can be like, hey, if you want, if you're ready to teach your kindergartner to second grader um, how to start reading, and you busy and you don't really got time to do all this, send me a private message and we can talk about my private reading lessons that I offer. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much what you start doing with your barber and stuff, right? You just start creating content. Yeah, I just started posting like little stuff. Like, I even started posting like setting up. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That. And clients start coming in, right? That's it. So it's like a barber is like, I, right, the best wave grease to use. Um, how to get a tight line. How to cut your own hair. Uh, the best clippers to use. Um, how to, I told him one time, like, how to put your do-rag on without having a line across your head. How to keep your dreads tight. So all that, 
You see what I'm saying? So I got a, um, this um, lady who go to church with me. She she do um, braids. She do um, faux locks. You know what that is, right? Mm-hmm. So she was like, um, but she did what everybody on her page. If you go to her Instagram, it's just a whole bunch of pictures of all the hair that she do. But everybody do that. Okay. Everybody like post pictures of all the hair you do, yeah. and you can take anybody pictures and post them. So I was like, start doing like videos, like how to keep my faux locks tight, how to make them look new, how to make them thick. How to, and I show, I went to YouTube and I typed in how to, and I put four locks in, and were like 15, 20 different topics posted up. And I was like, you need to create a video about each one of these. And she started creating it, people started reaching out. That makes sense? <laughs> yeah. We shoot most of our stuff just like this. That's it. That's it. An iPhone. What kind you got? It don't matter what it is. It don't matter. Yeah, you good. You good. All you need is some good lighting. And you don't got to go get no lighting kit. You just be with some good lighting there. You can go outside. You don't got to do none of that. You don't got to have... Shooting videos. Yes. Okay. And then once you, start running, once you start running the money up and you want to hire like Kev to come out and shoot you or whatever, you can do that. But you don't got to have that to get started. You can shoot it with your phone. You make millions of dollars just from shooting videos with your phone. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. But here's the tip, though. Nobody was naturally used to it, though. Everybody kind of had to get used to it. Because it's new, it was new for everybody. So even kids, people were like, well, kids, they used to it. Not really. I mean, they got used to it. Mm-hmm. Then they start they start playing around with it, and they was like. They probably were more willing to catch on and learn. Yeah, because they're young, right? Cause they, so they got less negative limiting than beliefs. That's why it's, mm-hmm. it's easier to teach this business stuff to younger people than to adults. Because if I got, I got clients who are like 30, 40, 50, and it's like it's so much stuff you got to like battle through to get them to do something. Come in here, Tyler, 17, one class, he went and did it. He came back the next week, like I got 15 barber clients. Just implement one thing. You know what I'm saying? Jalen, who'll be here in a minute, we just ordered his shirts the other day. He just, he'd been here two weeks. He just ordered 100 shirts for his new clothing line. And he just launched the thing two weeks ago. So, so it's easier when you don't got all that, you know, stuff you but people be dealing with. Generation, though, I tell them all the time, I love their generation. Like, they're not as fearful as we were. Yep. Like, look, I'm going to apply for this loan. They give it to me. They don't. They don't. What we doing next? Mm-hmm. Like, I love them. They're not fearful at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't blame them either. I love it. You know why? This, don't, don't, please don't take this the wrong way. A lot of younger people. People, they done seen over and over and over of like what the older generations teach fail. Yes, bro. They be like, well, my mom and my dad teaching this, that my grandma and I'm saying the same thing, my great grandma saying the same thing, mm-hmm. but ain't nobody got it. Ain't nobody like, we still in, we still mm-hmm. in the trap, like, but y'all saying this the route to success, yeah. but they ain't. They see that, they like, wait, 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 wait. I hear what y'all are saying, and I res- respectfully, but we see that ain't working. That ain't working. Right. So we got to figure something else out. We were taught just to get a job, you know, and maintain that. Yeah. Make sure your rent is paid and don't make high trouble. Yeah. You know, don't ruffle anybody else's feathers. Right. You know, just do what you got. Try to work, try to stay there 40 years, mm-hmm. retire with a pension. Live on that pension, mm-hmm. but none of that stuff don't exist no more. Yet. Ain't nobody giving out no pensions no more. What a pension? A pension is like when you retire and they pay you a check for the rest of your life. Or they'll lay you off when you're about to retire and you can't get your money. The military don't even do that no more. Yeah. Like people be telling, people still telling kids who graduate high school, go to the military and the military can give you a check the rest of your life. The military don't even do that no more. Mm. Like my cousin in the military, and he was like, he got in right before right when they cut that off. Like, they don't even do that no more. But, so it's, it's, it's different. Should I, should I call on you?
What's up? What you gonna say? White cousin with. Demond. Demond. All right. So it's five o'clock. So let's start. Yeah. What's up, man? What's up? What's up? I thought you had swimming lessons. What? That's you had swimming lessons. I have swimming lessons. Huh? You said you had. I thought was Jabari had swimming lessons. Oh no. I thought you had swimming lessons too. You already know how to swim. That's what you trying to say? No, I, I don't swim. Oh, you don't swim? Okay, you game. I know, I know how to swim, but I don't have swimming lessons. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay, cool, cool. All right, let's get to it, y'all. So, Troy, what you up? A pen. Let me see if I got a pen. Hold on one second. Uh, get this one. Put it back there for me. Go catch it. Let me see if some. Let me see if there's some um, notebooks up here, right quick. Quick. Let's. We want. I want to shake this thing up a little bit. So let's go around real quick. Tell everybody, what's your name? How old are you? What school you go to if you go to school? What do you do? So if you got a business or something like that, let us know about your business. And uh, what's the big win you had this past week? The faster we can do this, the faster we can get into it. I already look at some of y'all face, I already know. But I'm doing it for a reason, trust me. Who wanna go first? Go ahead, Troy. Sure. Give him a job. Give him a job. <laughs> so this your last week of school, right? Good stuff. Good stuff. Who next? I saw your hand. Go ahead, Jeremiah. Uh, I'm Jeremiah Faithful. I'm homeschooled. I'm 13 years old, and uh, I have a popsicle business. Cool. Make popsicles and stuff. What's your? I don't really know my big one. I guess. Come on, man. We didn't did this. Just surviving another week, I guess. Surviving another week. How old are you? Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. <laughs> You know, you gotta be grateful for every week you have. I agree. I I accept that. I accept that. I accept that. I was gonna make him come up with another one, but I like I like I like how you clean it up. <laughs> Who next? Go ahead. You next, MJ. My name is Tyler Ingram. I'm 17 years old. I go to East Carter High School. I'm a personal barber, and my big win this past week was I actually got that. Really, I guess you could say, coach. One of my first, not really students, but. One of my homeboys, cause he he started he started to pick his barber uh, business off the ground as well. So I got to show him like the ins and outs and like what to do and you know how to increase and decrease you know time management and all that when he came here. Cool, cool. Give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand. Who next? Who next? Who next? Who next? Who next? Go. Good. My name, my name is my name is MJ. I'm seven years old. I'm. I'm in second grade. I'm currently homeschooled right now. My my big accomplishment from this week is the same as Jeremiah's because I am grateful. To no, you gotta come up with another one. You gotta come up with another. what's another big win you had? Just come back to me. Come back to you? Okay, we'll come back to you. Go. Who next? Go ahead, bro. My name Miles Cameron. I'm 19. I'm not in school. So my big win this weekend for coming to this class is because you know it helped me out. This is my first day. Okay, cool. Give him a hand, give him a hand, give him a hand, give him a hand. With that, with that, with that. Who next? Mighty Will. Mighty Will. <laughs> my name is Neil Mighty Hickman, 21. I did, um, I attended Fort Valley State University, but I love it. And my big win was um, coming up here today. Cool. I've been trying to come up here, but I'll be busy. Got it. Well, you got a business already? Nah. Cool. Should be busy. Nah, nah, nah. Okay, say no more. Give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand. What's up, bro? Who next? Go ahead. My name is Sheldon. I'm uh, 19. Well, I graduated from Riverdale. Well, I got a business called LOL. And uh, I'm going to call it like, like, Stanford Living Off Dicks. And um, I gave you all my accomplishments, like, come here this week. Okay. Give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand. Give me a hand. You got it? So LOS, closing line? Yeah. Okay. Living off licks? Yeah. Like licks, licks? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't understand. Don't need to. <laughs> Who next? Who next? My name's Chris Rock. 17. Um, I don't have no business yet. My biggest accomplishment is, I mean, my accomplishment is in Coming Hill. Coming Hill, okay. I'm laying y'all out with the easy. I'm laying y'all out with the easy ones. Just cause it's so many of y'all. It's okay. Who next? Everybody, 
everybody go go like y'all already know how this go. Who gonna go? Who next? You already went. KK, Promise. What's up? One of y'all represent for the ladies. How about that? Who wanna go first? What about that guy in the back? Just chill. Everybody come and go. Go. Go ahead. My name is Promise. I'm 18. I go to Lovejoy. Um, I run track and play soccer. Um, I make t-shirts and make them. And my biggest win was making five sales within like three weeks. Nice. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. You gonna go? We can't hear you. I mean, 10 years old. She said seven at first, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I didn't know you were seven. Say one more time. Working on your business? Cool. Give a hand, give a hand, give a hand, give a hand, give a hand. Give a hand. What's up, bro? My name is Jakar, I'm 14. I go to um, Ingleburn in middle school. Um, I don't got no business here. I'm currently trying to find me something to do for the summer. So I want to just be bored. And, um, and my biggest uh, accomplishment is um, passing my uh, final exam for middle school. Passing final exam for middle school? Yeah. Okay. Get my hand, get my hand, get my hand. So everybody, this is y'all last week or next week y'all last week? Uh, next week my last week. Next week y'all last, next week? This week was your last week? Next I know y'all. Next, next week your last week. All right, cool. Let's get into it. We good on the mic, bro? All right, bet. So let's get to it. Uh, nah, bro. I can't let you slide. Yeah. Go ahead, bro. I ain't going to make I ain't gonna make the parents go. Y'all can if y'all want to. Go ahead. What's your name? Antonio. Antonio. I'm 20 years old. About to attend the art Atlanta. Got your LLC? Cool, cool, cool. I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. What's up, bro? Tell her. Go ahead and introduce yourself. You walked in right on time. How you doing? I'm Jay. I'm uh, 17 years old. I don't go to school right now. And I work on a t shirt deal. What's the name of the t shirt business? Go Getters. Go Getters. Okay, give him a hand. Give him a hand. Give him a hand. What? And it's, a, it's official. Oh, yeah. What's your biggest accomplishment this week? Oh, uh, placing an order. Placing an order for how many shirts? Over 100. 100 shirts. He ain't playing with this thing. I like, how many shirts you going to start with, bro? He was like, 100. Cool. Anybody else want to introduce themselves who didn't go? Uh, you went. Right there. No. I said anybody else want to introduce themselves. He get to choose if he want to go. Um, Different. Everybody good? All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to recap real quick because I know we got a lot of new people. So I want to recap just to make sure everybody on the same page. And then what's going to happen is, yes. I found out my, my big accomplishment. What's your biggest accomplishment? Finish all your tests. Everybody give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand, give me a hand. So I'm going to do it. We're going to do a recap so we can bring everybody up to speed. And then, so for those who got a business already, raise your hand if you already have a business. Okay, cool. Who's in the process or you want to start a business? All right, perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a recap. And then you will basically see, and for those of you who missed some of this, we're gonna, I'm going to give you like, so for example, one of the pillars to the seven pillars of a million dollar business First of all, who got a business and you want to grow it to a million dollars? Raise your hand. Who want to start a business and grow a business to a million dollars? All right, cool. So, so the seven pillars to a million dollar business. So the first one is the right mindset. So it's seven pieces of it. So the first piece is the right mindset. And then we walk through the 11 habits of a million, of millionaire entrepreneurs. So for those of you who don't, didn't get the 11 habits of a millionaire entrepreneurs, I'm gonna get, make sure y'all get that. So I get y'all a number or whatever when we wrap up and I can just text you the link. So you had that. We also gonna be working on probably by the second week of June, we'll have like the online members area too. So y'all can log in and the videos will be inside of there. And then all these recordings that we do every week, it'll be inside of there as well. And we got a workbook. The workbook should be done around that same time as well. So y'all have a workbook that y'all can take with y'all. So y'all had that with y'all on that. So the right mindset, living habits of men and entrepreneurs. Number two is the right product. And then we talked about if you're going to create a product, because some of y'all in the create a product phase, some of y'all want to just improve on the product, right? So some, if you want to, for example, if you're starting a clothing brand, 
you pretty much just, you creating something, but you're improving on other clothing brands as well. Would y'all agree? Clothing brand people? Yep. Or, and then some people creating stuff from scratch. Number three, we talked about the right client. So based on what you're selling, it's probably gonna, it ain't gonna be, it ain't gonna be for everybody, but it's gonna be for specific people. That's why with your story and stuff like that gonna be very important. And we talk about that in the right marketing. And then, let me stop right here before I get to number seven. And basically what we're doing now is every single, every week for the most part, we're bringing in a new guest. And then we're going to see how these seven, last week we didn't drill them like we should have drilled them. But we're going we're gonna to have a, a special guest who like already done did this at a high level. And then we're going to get them to share their secret sauce for their specific business. And then you'll be able to see how this looks in real time. And then you'll be able to get specific insight on your specific business as well. Does that make sense? So if y'all got questions, as I'm walking through this, if anything ain't clear, this is what you'll be working on at home or in here. And then even throughout, if y'all had questions, you, I give y'all my contact information so y'all can hit me if y'all got questions or whatever as well. Does that make sense? So y'all will be good. Because my goal is not for y'all to come in here and like get motivated and get hyped up and be like, oh, this possible, or that would sound good. My whole goal is for y'all to come in here and implement like Promise, Jalen, everybody who coming in here with um, Tyler, taking the stuff and like implement it and like get some results, making some money, building a business, creating jobs, retiring your parents or whatever, whatever the goal is. Does that make sense? So that's the whole goal for you to actually do something with it. Um, and we're gonna be here to support you to make it happen. Number five is the right business plan. So the right business plan consists of seven things. Who wanna who want give them the business plan? Who wanna break the business plan now? What they need to have in their business plan for the people who don't got a business plan? Anybody got it? The business plan. Don't nobody got it? I lost my notebook. It's gone. Lost your notebook. That's like money, man. You lost money. Oh, well, was that just a. You got it? Yeah, I was wondering. I was going to let it continue to go. Yeah. You don't got the business plan? What's the business plan? Give them the bit. You got a promise you want to do it? So the folks who need, who, who working on their business plan, what's the, what's the components of the business plan? Promise. So your one-page business plan, the first step is going to be your business name. So what's your business name? Go ahead. Like what problem does it solve, right? So the second thing is like what, does your, what problem does your business solve? Because if you want to make, if you want to build, if you want to make a million dollars, the way you make a million dollars is by doing what? Huh? You want to make a million dollars, how y'all do it? Folks who've been coming here these past few weeks? Solving the, Solving the problem. It's real simple. It ain't complicated. Make sense? It ain't got nothing to do with working hard. Yes, you got to put in some work, but it ain't got nothing to do with it. It's about solving some problems. How does your product solve a problem? So when you got this product, you're like, okay, how does my product, that don't work no more. How does my product solve a problem? Make sense? And people going to pay you for that. So. What problem does it, your product solve? What's number three, promise? Huh? What's your product? So what, pro what, what problem does your product solve? And number three is what's your product? What's number four? What's the price of your product? What's the price of your product? Number five is profit margins. Anybody, what's, somebody, somebody tell me what the profit margin is. What's your profit? What's the profit margin? It's the amount of money you make um, after sales with uh, on like like buying the thing, right? Yep. Can you give me a, give me give me an example. Give me like an actual example. Like you buy like a hundred shirts and then you sell all a hundred of them and you get like the money that you paid for them mm -hmm. plus profit that you sold them for. Yep. Exactly. So if you got so let's, so let's put some real numbers in there. So let's just say, for example, let's say, so this is a real life. So let's say, for example, you got, let's say you paid $15 for the shirts, right? And you sold it for $30. Your profit margin is how much? $15. $15. Does that make sense? So y'all want to know what your profit margin is in your business. So when you're making money, if you don't understand what your profit margin is, you go out of business quick. Does that make sense? Because you'll be feeling like you're making money, but it's the same money over and over and over and over again. Make sense? 
So profit margins. Uh, what's the, what's next? Number six. What's who's your ideal client? Who's your ideal client? So if you sell T-shirts for three hundred dollars, you know everybody ain't your ideal client, right? Even if you sell it for twenty dollars, depending on what the name of it is or what the brand is, it ain't. It may not be for everybody. Make sense? Yep. All right. Because Jalen's is is go getters. So certain type of people gonna resonate with that message, right? Live off lits. Certain crowd going they're gonna be like, oh yeah, give me one. Give me some for the whole squad. Make sense? So that's how it works. And everybody ain't supposed to like it. Everybody ain't supposed to be like, all right, it ain't for everybody. All right, what's next? Promise. Number seven is what? The right marketing strategy. So number seven is the right marketing strategy. And which leads us to number six of the seven pillars to a million dollar business. And if I'm going too fast, y'all just stop me. If y'all got any questions, jump in and let me know what's up. So number, seven, number six is the right marketing plan. The right marketing plan. Who got the marketing plan notes? You got the marketing plan notes, promise? Run it down for us and run it down. So if you have a mar your marketing plan, first, what's up, bro? First is your website. What's your website? So and then we talked about like what different platforms you can do a website on, right? So what's the different platforms you can look at to do a website on? Shopify, depending on what you're selling, right? Shopify, Squarespace. Squarespace. What you about to say? Wix. Wix is an option. GoDaddy is an option. Canva is an option. So you can kind of look and see which one is best for you. What's up, bro? Do, do you have like a, a thing that can hold your camera? Uh, a clipboard. AK, if you look on that thing, when you go in the front room, right as soon as you go to the, to, to the left, it's a clipboard right there. You grab it from the room, please, How sir. Many two. I think it's two. You can grab both of them for me, please. Uh, what's up? Can you get some water around here? In a second. Chill out. All right, so the first one was your website. What's the second part of the um of the marketing plan? Choose a platform. What it meant by choose a platform? So what social media platform y'all on? How many y'all already on social media? Which which one y'all on? Instagram. Instagram. So that might be the one you start with. YouTube. Instagram. Okay, YouTube. So yeah, so you just pick which one. If you're already on one, then you just start with that one, right? So what's your what's your social media? What um what's what's number three? Say it one more time. What's your posting strategy? So you got your so you got your platform you on. You got the website where you're gonna send people to, because the goal the goal of your social media is to send people to your website that you had created. Does that make sense? Because you don't really own social media or your or your profile. So your goal is to get people off of social media and then get them to the platform that you actually own, which is your website. Make sense? So your posting strategy. Explain what the posting strategy is, promise. How many times per day are you posting? How many times per day you gonna post? Uh-oh. How many times per day you gonna post? And then what type of content you gonna post? So me and April was talking about it earlier, right? It's like, Content, we talked about, some of y'all was in here, we were talking about like the types of content. How many of y'all like watch content online? Like videos and stuff like that. What type of content y'all typically watch? Travel. What type of content? Say it one time. Blogs. Blogs. Who, who y'all like? Y'all like anybody specific? Funny Mike. Funny Mike. So like the comedy videos, right? So the comedy videos. So what y'all, what y'all, so who watched the, who watched the comedy videos? Like Desi Banks, Funny Mike, anybody watch some videos? What can y'all learn about the, about the online comedians? What can y'all learn from the online comedians, I should say? <laughs> what can y'all learn? Right. So what, what can you learn from the online comedians? There we go. That's how I should have had it anyway. Huh? What do they do all the time? How they got popular? Free 
Create content. Funny. Not even necessarily being funny. They, but they, they be funny, but how do they be funny though? Create content. So Desi do a piece of content every week. I think he do at least one a week. And then he's just posting in between. Now he got like, I think like four million Instagram followers. So now he get a check. Now he went from just doing the content every day to now he get paid to go do com comedian shows, I mean comedy shows all over the country. And everywhere he go, it, fill, it sell out. Because all he got to do is post on Instagram and be like, I'm going to be in Tallahassee tonight. Y'all pull up. I'm going to be in Florida tonight. I'm going to be in uh, Miami tonight. I'm going to be in Atlanta tonight. I'm going to be in, you know, Harlem. Pull up. And they sell the whole thing out. Make sense? And then when y'all, so let's say, for example, you first start. How many of y'all already like create content? So if you just starting out and you, and you at first you ain't really going to get that many followers. You ain't going to get that many views. It's going to seem like you're just doing this for nothing. But as you continue to do it for a month. And then two months, then three months, then four then months, a then a year, two years, three years. Then it start to like snowball. A decade. Does that make sense? Y'all with me? Yeah. Any questions so far? Is it making sense so far? Mm -hmm. What was next on the marketing plan, promise? Mm, that, was it. that was it? Okay, perfect. So your content, what's your posting strategy, how often you going to post, and what you going to post. Is it making sense so far? Y'all y'all quiet, so I'm assuming that y'all asking these yourselves these questions and you like filling in the blanks. So like what content you gonna use, whatever. You about to say something, KB? Uh -huh. You good? Yeah. All right. So seven pillars to the million dollar business. Six is the right marketing plan. So we just talked about the marketing plan. Mm -hmm. And then seven last is the, right is the right systems. So you gotta have three types of systems in your business. What's the three types of systems? Promise, what's the three types of systems? <laughs> Sales. Sales system, marketing, marketing system, delivery. yep, and your delivery system. So your delivery, your fulfillment, how you, how you deliver. When somebody buy, so for example, somebody go to your, sh go to your site and buy your shirt, how do they get it? You see what I'm saying? So like when somebody buy on your website, like then what happened? Like do they, is it sent to somebody else to print it and then ship it off? Is it already printed and then somebody else get it, package it up, take it to the post office, send it out? Is that all automated? Or like what exactly does that look like? Like how, how do you market your business, make a sale, means make a sale and then it gets shipped out? All like in the process. Does that make sense? And what's the key? What's the key to these systems? What's the goal with these systems? To solve big problems, and ultimately, you want your systems to do what? Keep going. Keep going. Make what? Money. Make money. Automate. automate. What does automate mean? So it go automatically. Yeah. So you want this to work without who? That's without you. So you want somebody to go buy some. You want them to see your marketing. Click on your ad or watch your video. Go click on some. Go buy. Check out. And then get their product or whatever without you, without you having to deal with it. Depending on, how, depending on what type of business you got, right? That makes sense? Uh, like to help people? Yep, exactly. So I, anybody ever saw an ad on Instagram or Facebook? Anybody ever bought something on the ad? Anybody saw an ad and clicked it? Man, I clicked. You ain't buy none? You bought some? You bought some on the ad? You bought some on the ad? Got it. So y'all, so if y'all bought some, checked out, and then it came to your house eventually, Ordering. and you don't even know if the person even knew that you made the sale. Make sense? That's how you. That's how you want it to work. Y'all with me? What's up? You ain't buy none? Okay, I hope not. <laughs> Good. Cool. All right. So that's the seven pillars to a million dollar business. Let me be quiet. And I'm, we're going so this is seven pillars, and then we're gonna we're gonna have like a real life example come up in a few seconds, so y'all can kind of see this whole thing play out. What questions y'all got? Y'all quiet. What's up? What do you mean by a real life example? You'll see. 
You'll see. Any questions? What's up? What's up? This is all we've been talking about. Everybody introduce yourself. You go, go ahead and introduce yourself, matter of fact. Oh. Tell everybody, stand up real quick. Tell everybody who you is, your name, if you go to school. Uh, like on Saturday? Or we just do it regular? I don't know. You do it regular. How old are you? I'm going to be 21 next, next month. I'll be 21 next month. So what's that? Is June? Yeah, June. Okay. Bet, bet. Give him a hand. 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 Uh, yeah, that's right. What's your biggest accomplishment this week? This week? Um, yeah, I went to work for the landscape. It was your first day? Yeah. Cool. I don't know if I'm going to go back. You don't know if you're going to go back? <laughs> <laughs> I don't go back, though. You ain't like it? Right. I had, like, today he told me I killed the snake. I ain't even know it. Mm. I get the weed eating the little thing and I fall in the ditch. Then it ants everywhere. I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't get down like that. That's, I, that's crazy. So, what, what kind of business you want to start? Uh, I think, I've been thinking about uh, starting a mobile mechanic business. Mobile mechanic? Yeah. Got it. Got it. You good? So you so you good with like fixing cars? No, I'm not changing the tire though. So you're not changing the tire? I'm not changing the tire. I'm, I'm going to school and do all the rest of the stuff. Got it. I've been hacking around like regular people I know. Yeah, and here's the cool thing, bro. You actually don't even got so let's say for example, so like a mobile mechanic business. You really don't even got to be the one fixing the cars because it's a lot of mechanics. Who don't got no clients. Yeah. So you can be like, look, I'm gonna get the clients come through. When they come through, they just need to have a, some transportation. When I get the client, I'm gonna let you know, you pull up and you fix it. And you just be like, this is all the stuff we do. We change tires, we um, change oil, change your brakes. You can change your brakes. Yeah, you gotta change your brakes. So you may so you may even just start with that. You know what I'm saying? It may not be everything right out the gate, but just be like, what's this? What's the simple stuff we can do? So that chain break, chain oil. I'm trying to learn how to do like a little simple stuff because I know I ain't going to be able to like fix up everything. Yeah, exactly. So you only got to do none of that. You can be like, we're going to change oil, we're going to change tires, and we're going to change, um, what did I say, change your brakes. So those are the three things you do. Or you may, it may be something else. It may be change, train, transmission. I don't know. I don't really know how to fix cars either. <laughs> but you can be like, these are the things we do. And then you find some people who do that stuff. And then you find out what you're gonna charge, and then when they put when they when they place the order, you had them go out, do it, and then you pay them to do it, and then you make money. So that's easy stuff. I help you sell that. They ain't no, you can set that up easy. I mean, and people will pay for that all day long. People pay for that all day long. And then you set up a situation with like a local tie shop, and you be like, look, when people hit me up wanting their tires fixed, I'm gonna pull up on y'all, get the tires. Y'all give me a discount so I can put a cap on it. And then we're going to get the tires, we're going to make the play, and then we'll bring you the money back. I was, I was just talking to my, uh, my boss about it today. I was trying to figure out what type of trailer I should try to get. Mm -hmm. like, I know what type of jack I want. Mm -hmm. Go jack. And I was just asking, like, I don't know where I should go and get the tires. Yep. Wait, what's that? Well, you, you said, like, on the street, right? Yeah. So it's a few of them. You can actually, I mean, I would probably go to, like, some of these. Got it. That's where I've been going. Like, I don't, I don't know if I can go over there. Let me buy a whole bunch of tires for y'all. So I would go in there and probably talk to the owner, right? And I'll see if I know somebody too, but I'll probably go talk to the owner and be like, look, we're starting this um, mobile mechanic business. We want to work with somebody who will give us the tires at a discount at a price point where we can actually go sell it and make some. Yeah. Are y'all willing to do a partnership? And if they ain't with it, cool, go to another one. But I'm, I'm pretty sure I know somebody in my network who will probably work on. But I, I, I'm going to check it out and then let you know. All right. Yeah. But that's, that'll be simple to do. What question? Anybody got questions? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's going on? What's going on? Questions? I can't hear you. When are we going to do the vocabulary? In a minute, I got you. I just asked so I can 
Okay, I got you. All right, here we go. So, no questions? You good? All right, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to do like a real life example. So what I want to do, because and the reason, let me explain to y'all the reason why we're doing this. Because I want to like, like show y'all the whole game, help y'all implement the game, and then bring some examples in here so y'all can like see it played out. The folks who look just like you, who kind of started where you started, and then built something. So last week we had somebody come in, and he built a personal training business from scratch, just from his garage, starting with a few dumbbells, and then he built the whole thing up. Now you're a big deal. So this week, I got somebody else, and, and everybody who I'm bringing who's going to be official. So they already vetted. I already know they're official. They ain't just talking. They actually do it. So I want him to come um, uh, kind of share his sauce because basically he, and I'm going to let him share his whole story or whatever, but he basically, his initial, if I'm not mistaken, he'll clear this up. But his initial focus was going to the NFL. He was already being like recruited by NFL teams the whole nine yards, and then had a um, an injury that derailed that whole situation. So then he had a, he developed the skill, took that skill, and was like, how do I solve some problems with this skill? Because we said if you want to make a million dollars plus, you got to solve big problems. So he's like, how do I solve okay, a big problem right. with no, this particular skill? Okay. Yeah, and minutes, then so. he built this company up. Now he get to travel all over the world for free because people fly him all over the world to do provide his particular service, and this is photo and video, right? Anybody, any of y'all like interested in like photo and video? I think I heard somebody say it earlier, doing like photo and video. So you can take photo and video and turn that into a multi-million dollar business. <clears throat> he gonna talk about that and get in. How many of y'all? It would be cool to like get flew to an international country, somebody pay you ten thousand dollars to come shoot them for a day. <laughs> And now you chill for the vacation and your whole vacation free. How many of y'all would learn like would like to learn like how you go about doing that? Perfect. So y'all help me bring to say it's my brother, Kevin, Cutting Kill, Buford. Give me a hand, y'all. Give me a hand, y'all. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. You, need, you need these or you good? I'm good. All right, cool. So first, I want to watch. So I want to drill you on this first, right quick. Okay. So the seven pillars. We can drill them together, y'all. So the right mindset. Mm -hmm. Did you have? Did you you got this? Yep. In process? Yep. Perfect. The, the right product. What's your product? <laughs> it's content. It's content. Content. So mm -hmm. you help people do what? I help people create compelling content that converts into cash. So I basically teach you how to create compelling content or stories that you can go ahead and sell and make money off of. So what problem does, does that solve? Um, so initially that's, help, that's helping people be able to, one, uh, make money um, doing what they genuinely do on a daily basis, which is telling their story. And then number two, it allows them to go ahead and actually do it more organically. Um, so instead of thinking so heavily about what kind of content do I need to create and this and the third, a lot of us don't give ourselves the time or the method to even notice that our story is already worth so much money. So it's just like, let's, let's get used to you telling your story to other people because you've lived it already. There you go. And so, you, so, so essentially you help businesses get more clients mm -hmm. with video mm -hmm. online. Number three, the right client, what kind of, what kind of clients you work with? Uh, so we work with coaches, consultants, and service providers. Um, and a actually, we just transitioned from uh, companies and corporations. So we, we're doing the big businesses, but we, like, we want it to be a little bit more uh, intimate. So even the, and I don't call them small business because I still think they're, they're big businesses as well, but um, we work with coaches, consultants, and service providers right now. All right. Uh, oh, yeah. The right marketing plan. The right marketing. How mm -hmm. you be, how you get clients? Um, so really, it's just showcasing my lifestyle. So one thing that I love to do is travel. And what I normally do, and I don't give a lot of people this on my social media, uh, which is showing people where I go and what I'm doing. I give it to them in my stories because that's only 24 hours. Um, so with that, uh, it's really off of social media. We have a big game plan that we have rolling out next month at the beginning of the month where you're going to see tons of content um, and just stockpiles of just me traveling. It's more like a blog. Um, but we've broken it down into pieces of where I've gone or where the team has gone, what we've done, and how we helped our clients. So we're just telling our story from a first-person per first type of point of view. Perfect. So right business plan, you obviously. Right marketing plan. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you just talked about that. It's mm -hmm. going to roll out another one. And then the right system. What systems you got in place to help you run the business? like? Man, you so I was, I was my own system. I was taking all of my phone calls. I didn't have a scheduling system in place. It was more so just text messages or emails. 
um, or just setting setting that whole thing up. So right now, the systems that I have in place are just like um, scheduling, um, questionnaires. So being able to kind of minimize conversations because time is money. But um, just really putting those into place. Social media, um, we have like as far as making time to post content. Now scheduling the content out, so I don't always have to be on my phone to make that content. So we have software for that now. Um, and just so much more that is actually just being uh, introduced to me on a daily basis. Cool. So y'all see the seven <laughs> pillars, right? All right. So give everybody like a up. So kind of bring, I know I kind of gave them like a, 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 um, a piece mm -hmm. of the story. But right. kind of bring them up to speed of like, all right, you started from scratch. Kind of what brought you to this point okay. to build what you've been able to build. And then they better just drill you whatever the questions they got so okay. they can apply to their business. For sure. For Whether sure. Whether they started or, you know, already in the game. So go okay. ahead. Um, so my name is Kevin Buford. I'm a multimedia specialist. So we help coaches, consultants, and service providers create compelling content that turns into cash. Um, so I actually started my business seven years ago. We just celebrated a uh, seven-year anniversary uh, two weeks ago. So that was really, really dope. Um, but I actually am from Cleveland, Ohio. So uh, maybe 45 minutes from where, from where LeBron actually plays and stayed and grew up. and. I went to Euclid High School. I played football, sports, uh, track, I mean, sport, swimming, uh, and basketball. So, like, sports was my life growing up. And I was, at, I was really talented, broke a couple records there, and got a scholarship to go play football at Wayne State University. Uh, Wayne State is a Division II school in Detroit, Michigan. And once I got there, things were really good. But actually, before I got there, just a transitional point, I had a conversation with my mother, and my mother was asking me, what do you want to do when you go to college? Because we didn't even notice that we were going to have the opportunity or if I was going to have the opportunity to go to college. And my mom asked me, what, what is it that you want to do? Like, what do you want to do in college? And I said, I think I want to be a photographer. I like taking pictures and I like giving like my pictures to my friends and they're printing it and posting it and different things like that. And she told me that photographers don't make any money. So immediately, like I was really crushed because she has years of life more than, more than I. So it's just like, man, okay, I really enjoy doing that, but okay, but you're not a photographer, so how do you, okay, all right, that's cool. So, transition, went to uh, college, and I went to college on a football scholarship, but I also uh, was able to transition and get an engineering scholarship. So my major was actually engineering, uh, electrical uh, engineering. So I was gonna go into my career with that, um, but putting first sports and then falling back on my degree. So like my first semester, got all A's, and then I took an elective class where I just wanted to kind of try something and it was a film class. And that film class had me fall right back in love with photography, but it actually developed my mindset for video. Uh, once I did that, it was just like, I was just really intrigued with how videos were shot and I didn't know that like movies were shot out of order. And in the editing room, you can go ahead and actually shoot at the very end, but place the beginning here. So like just being able to have control of a timeline, like that was like mesmerizing to me. And it was really like destined for me because I fell right back in love with uh, photography, but I really started to grow a passion for videography. So I actually dropped my major of electrical engineering and I actually went into film and production. Mom had a lot to say about it, but she said, if you're happy, then I'm happy. And I said, I'm genuinely happy. Like my classes, I was already getting straight A's with those classes, but I enjoyed my classes now. My classes were like fun to go to. I was there early talking to the the professors because they would be on movie sets uh, I think one of them was on the set for Matrix, uh, Spongebob, uh, it was just like it was a lot of different movies so getting the cartoon aspect of it and then getting the real life aspect of movies uh, I was actually on set for Wolverine, Transformers, um, most more recently was uh, John, uh, John Wick so that was like really dope so in that transition um, I was able to go ahead and develop media but Football is still number one priority. Football is just like life. So I was in my junior year, going into my junior year, and life was, it was good. I was in the best shape of my life. Um, probably 190 pounds, um, really good, looking good. My physique was there. And then maybe the second game of the season, second or third game of the season, I was going in for a tackle, and I was actually a defensive back. So I was going in for a tackle for a running back, and the crown of my teammate's helmet hit me right in my shoulder and it knocked my whole arm out of socket and I couldn't feel anything in my left arm for the rest of the season. So basically that ended my career, but that ended my season. I thought I can, you know, just heal up and just go ahead and finish out my career, but 
um, that really ended my season. And so what I had to do was um, I talked to a couple of doctors. They couldn't actually do the, the surgery there, but I heard that I had nerve damage in my shoulder. So what I had to do is undergo nerve reconstruction surgery. So what they did was they took the nerves out of the back of my leg and they had to lace it back up to my shoulder just so I can have filling in my arm. Um, so that was a, a year process to kind of heal and get back to, but I wanted to get back onto the football field. And I had a conversation with my coach that really changed my life. And my coach said, my coach said, um, I would hate to, I would hate for you to come back onto this football field when you have so much more to give to the world. Uh, I want you to be able to raise your, your, your kids and hold your, your family and hold your children uh, without you having any shoulder issues. I would hate for you to come back on the field and have another tackle where you know now you can't use your arm at all. Um, so my coach kept me on my scholarship, but he did not allow me to play. And that was, that was like life changing for me because I've been playing, playing football since I was a little boy. So football was life for me. But then that's where media was able to go ahead and come into play. Like I told you, my classes were fun. So now that I don't go to practice, like I'm giving more into the classroom. I'm already getting good grades because I love what I do. But now there was this spark that was starting to fill the void of football. Um, I'm, I'm learning and looking at movies differently. Like movies starting, to, I'm starting to study movies in different camera angles and lighting and everything like that. And now that I have more time to invest in my degree, uh, football was starting to become a, a side point because I was always known, excuse me, I was always known by my jersey number. I was always known by what I can do on the football field. But now I'm starting to learn how to storytell, how to go ahead and create emotion through different lighting, how I'm going to, how I'm able to go ahead and really just showcase uh, other people's story um, because they have this trapped up in their head, but now I'm able to go ahead and contribute to how to develop that on paper or on the cell phone or on the TV screen. So that was extremely dope. Um, so fast forward, I was, after college, I actually got a job working at Netflix and I was talking to them. This is still in Detroit, Michigan. I was talking to them and they said, um, you know, you do a really good job here. I was doing customer service, which is taking phone calls, but you know, you dress for the job which, that, that you want, not the job that you have. So I was just answering fo uh, phone calls, uh, supposed to be helping people with their Netflix uh, subscriptions. But I wanted to get on Netflix Originals. You see how big Netflix Originals are nowadays. Uh, I saw the potential in it back then when I was still in school. Um, but they said, you have to go to California and you have to talk to this, that, and the third. And I said, well, this is, this is why I'm here talking to you guys, because I want if you can link the connections and help me to get out to LA and whatever the case may be, let's make that happen. Um, so they basically pushed me to the side. And when one door closes, another one opens. I actually got another uh, opportunity to go out to New York for All-Star Weekend um, to shoot All-Star. And it was either do that or stay at my job and have like solidified you know, revenue coming in every two weeks. It was good money, but I just I, I didn't love what I was doing. So I actually left my job and I went out to All-Star Weekend. I got paid $1,000 for the weekend. And it was, I absolutely loved it. I got to meet Diddy, Chris Brown, T.I. Um, it was like a, a, all the networking I was able to do off of just a weekend in, in New York. So it was just like, if I can get paid to do this on a consistent basis, like, that's it. I, like, I, I don't ever want, like, if I can just get paid to do this, like, I, everything else can work. I can make everything else work from there. So I, I, I started to pray. I wanted my body to heal. Uh, I wanted my pockets to fatten up. But more importantly, I wanted to be able to step into the role of what I see myself doing on a later basis. Like I loved traveling and I loved moving with this camera. And I said, God, if you just help me like to travel and just get paid, just put a little bit of money in my pocket, just enough food and just enough money to eat. Like, I think I'll be okay. Like, just let me travel and just move with this camera. And God was just able to bless me abundantly. I have been traveling for the last five to probably more than that. I've been traveling for the last eight years, um, doing what I love to do each and every single day and getting paid more than I thought or what I wanted or asked for at that point in time. Um, and it, it's just been an amazing experience. So one of my more, and I'll talk about it a little bit, one of my more recent experiences, I just went to Cancun, Mexico. I was going out there for a friend's wedding. And I was shooting a client, doing a photo shoot and video shoot, and she said she wants to um, do something creative, something out of the States and just like out of her element. And I said, hey, I'm, I'm heading to Cancun, you know, in a couple of weeks. Like, I would love to shoot something there. 
just putting it out there, just speaking it, just talking about it. And she said, oh, that would be amazing. I would love to do that. I was like, we can make it happen. You know, just let me know. It's like, uh, cause I love what I do and I'm going anyway. She was like, no, I'm serious. Let's make it happen. So we put the numbers together, made it happen. We had a, a two, three week turnaround time as far as what her concept was. How can we make it happen out there? Where do we have, we had to scout locations and different things like that. Um, and then we finally made it happen. But the fact that I was able to go out there um, from a free trip, now getting paid over $10,000 to shoot for a day. And now my whole trip is paid for. I was able to go ahead and live it up, do different things that I wanted to do. And I, I didn't work. I love what I, 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 love what I did. And it, it was just like an amazing process to me to be able to see that. Um, speak about it so far then, years ago, and uh, like I saw this, this happening already, just speaking it, just talking to, yeah, I'm going to be traveling international and just doing, like just speaking that on a consistent basis was just something that was amazing for me to see this flourish now. So um, leading up to this point, like it's been amazing, um, it's been a journey, but it hasn't always been this way, but I've always seen the gradual steps of progress to get to where I am today, and I'm still elevating. Mm -hmm. So, questions, questions, questions. What's up? I did music videos. Um, so how on the start off, like this is how you're so far look like that. Mm -hmm. And acting like the picture of how I had a video be like I right. made it. Mm -hmm. So how would I go about it? Let's say I wanna record myself and I'm not saying a word, but I'm just reenacting everything you say. Mm-hmm. Is it like what would that be? What is that even called? Mm, it's basically like voiceover narration. So it's like if you were like you seen what I forget what Kendrick video that was where the other guy was rapping. It was it was Kendrick's words though. So that's basically voiceover narration. So what you have to do is learn the lyrics, and then you kind of study his mannerisms. You kind of study how he was it aggressive, was it more melancholy, was it more soft. Uh, so you kind of so you can embody that. Um, you already see the tone of the video, but that's called voiceover narration. So what you basically do is just learn the lyrics, um, study the video, his mannerism, his body language, and then the lighting as well. Is that lighting, like, I think the lighting was set up to be like a dark, eerie type of police scene where it's like one-on-one. -on -one. So you kind of study that environment and it's just like, that's where acting uh, comes into place. Where you have to take yourself there and it feels funny. And I talk to, I talk to all of my clients about this when they're trying to play someone or play their you know, like how Beyonce has a, uh, what, what is, what is Queen B? Like she has that, uh, that alter ego. And what you basically have to do, you have, you have to take yourself there. Like you really step out of who you are to everybody else and to yourself and really embody who you want to be. So I talk about going above and beyond on camera because sometimes it'll show up right where you need it to be. You know what I'm saying? So if you're trying to be this other person, but you're coming with your mannerisms and your personality, sometimes it shows up a little bit lower on camera. So you have to be over the top on camera just for it to be over explained or really uh, felt when actually when someone's watching it. So falling or yelling and different things like that, if you're not going over the top, then it's that emotion, that conviction is not really, uh, is not really felt when somebody is watching it. So that's why I always talk about being over the top or being extra. Like I love being extra um, because it's fun. A lot of people just get, feel like they're judged uh, for doing something else or doing something different. So you just have to learn how to be extra or be that other person or just step into that, um, even if it's for a short amount of time. Um, that's how I really learned to go ahead and just uh, be a better version of myself is just by pushing myself to the limit. Like when I think about different traits of myself, like I'm strong, I'm charismatic, I'm funny, and it's just like, okay, how do I embody that? Okay, how does that come off um, to certain people? Now how do I have that portrayal on film? So I ask, all, I ask myself all of those questions and I get, in, I get in the mirror or I get in front of the camera and I just, I just rip it out. I did reps, just reps, reps, reps. So um, somebody else talked about, um, you know, not doing this on a consistent basis or this is not what they do, but you just gotta get the reps in. Like if you know where you want this to go, then you have to put in the work and put in the reps right now in order to see it through. That makes sense? Okay. Yes, sir. Some of the first things that I've learned, that really stuck. Okay. Um, after college, one of the first things that stuck with me as a videographer. Hmm. One of the first things that stuck with me is that I cannot continue to do this for free. 
I am. <laughs> I am really. I, I love what I do. I love what I do. And I, you know, you, you if you ever heard the saying that you know, do what you uh, do what you would do for free. Um, I, I love what I was doing. So I was actually building up my resume, and this is something that we call free to fee right now. But I was building up my resume as far as the work that I was doing, and I'm just like, man, this is dope. Because I'm, I'm when I see it, like I see it before it's saw, and then when it's seen here, then it's already done when I get into editing. Did that make sense? No? Okay. I see the vision now. I see, I see what your concept is, right? But when I'm actually putting it on, like you have, there's a certain type of tick that you have to have in order to talk about an idea, execute the idea exactly or better than what, how you saw it, and then lay, and I call it the editing room is like my sandwich. Lay the foundation, lay the bread, then put the meat on top, then put the pepperoni, then the cheese, then the lettuce. Ooh, I need some salt, I need some pepper right there. I throw a little dash of chipotle on top of that, and then slap the, uh, found, uh, the top of the bread on top of there, and now I have my whole sandwich. So it's just like for you to be able to see that, then have the right ingredients or angles and lighting to go ahead and make that happen, and then take all of those ingredients and be able to, being able to execute and paint the picture in editing, like that takes a, like everyone can do it because there's a lot of people that's doing it on TikTok. Like you see it, now you have to execute it, which is getting the reps or running through it a couple of different times, and then you have to piece it together. And that's what I really, I really appreciate. It's like I love what I do, but I cannot continue to do this for free. I'm dope. I'm dope. So it was just like, I, when I started seeing my worth, that was the thing that was like, all right, I gotta start telling people no. Because I, I, now I've built up a body of work and I know that I'm, I'm I've been to New York, I done shot with Chris, but like, not, that's my resume now. Because I got into a free party and I was able to, now I have this on my resume. I done shot with Neo, Chris Brown, and just all of them. As long as I got a picture of them or a video, that's who I shot with, right? So it's just like, I, I couldn't even think about now doing work for you for free. And not even downplaying, but it's like, and this was uh, for the music videos as well. It's just like, you say you're what? Where's your music? You know, I've worked with Neo, I've worked with Chris Brown, I've worked with all of these artists, and you say that you don't have a budget. Oh, we, we don't have a conversation. Like, a lot of people don't want to in invest in the vision that they have set for themselves because they're thinking so small. So you have to be careful of entertaining people that don't even want to invest in their, their, their visions. So just be careful of that. Let me be ask careful you this. Of that. Well, MJ had his hand up first. Okay. Got a question? Mm -hmm. Who are some of the people you've made music video videos for? Um, so some of the music videos, so not all of them were necessarily artists. So one music video that I did, it's like a commercial um, for Adidas. So music video doesn't necessarily need to be an actual artist that's doing or rapping music. So Adidas approached us like they needed uh, some shooters to go ahead and get some B-roll. When B-roll is basically like the 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 secondary footage. So A-roll, if somebody is rapping and performing, that's A-roll. So B-roll are like different shots that will help complement that. Like behind so if you, the scenes though. A, no, not behind the scenes, just things that will help complement the image. Got it, got it. So if I'm up here rapping, I would do a close up of my chain, I would do a close up of my watch and everything like that. So different things to kind of help complement the visual and the aesthetic of it, Makes okay? Sense. So we shot uh, for Adidas and it was a fitness gear um, music video. So it was all music, but it was different people within the fitness realm uh, rocking different fitness gear. So the music was going, which were the lyrics, whoever the artist was, and the concept was to j just to go ahead and show people in Detroit, that's where I was staying at the time, um, really showcasing and doing what they do, whether it's break dancing, whether it's doing pull-ups in the park, uh, whether it's actually dancing in the studio, like that was a music video that we shot, we shot that for Adidas, so that's one of like the bigger music videos that I've done. Let me ask you this, do you, so anybody, who, who in here has like an interest of do, in doing like video or photography for business? All right, cool. So, Can you check that? Can you check that real quick? What? The camera? It's still running? Okay. So, so Saturday, um, this brother named Aristotle, he was there with us Saturday, he mentioned something, I, and I totally agree. Mm -hmm. So right now, it's a huge opportunity with starting a video of photography type business, right? Mm -hmm. You good? With starting a video of photography type business, right? Mm -hmm. Especially with like all the influencers and stuff like that, and a lot mm -hmm. of them don't got like a video team and nothing like that. Mm -hmm. So, and even on the local level. So for those who raise their hand who has an interest in doing a video slash photography or one or the other, mm -hmm. what, to make it super practical, what advice would you give them that they can literally go start with today, start implementing it? So by next Thursday, they got some momentum. So now they go, just say, okay, 
If y'all want to start a video photography business, this is mm -hmm. what I want y'all to go do this week. Mm -hmm. Boom, 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 boom. And then by next Thursday, we'll come back in here and then we'll build on mm -hmm. that. So, so, so that way over the next couple of weeks, they legit got a photo of videographer business. Does that make sense? I know it's a super that long does. question. That does. But do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. But in short, what's some steps they can apply? Like, here's what you need to do. Okay. Step one, step two, step three okay. to get this thing going. When starting a videography or production company or a film and photography, I think three main steps that you would need to take into, cons into consideration is figure out what it is that you want to shoot. Like I was really all over the place as far as I was trying this and trying that and trying, like you do have to go ahead and go through that process to figure out what is it, what's fun for you to shoot. Like music videos got so, so redundant to me because the artist's music was not up to the caliber of what I listened to. But the money was good for my pockets to pay rent, to go get food and doing this and the third. But I'm not, because you got to think about it. When you get into the editing room, this is something that you do on a consistent basis. You're hearing that song on replay, on loop. So if it's nonsense, like you're going to get tired of that song Thanks. sooner or later. So uh, one, figure out what it is that you want to shoot. So go out and shoot a little bit of everything. Or if you understand that you, um, you like doing lifestyle or if you like doing interviews, like go and shoot that. Um, just to see how it feels because the other the other half of that you have to go into the editing room now you have to work with the content or work with the work that you've already shot so figure out what it is that you want to shoot um, number two is start um, start treating yourself as a professional and what i mean by that is just like everyone cannot have access to you and then everyone can't have access to you anytime and every time of the day so like setting business hours, like I was getting phone calls at like 11.30 at night, like, yo, is the music video ready? Like, I can't wait. I know, uh, I know you say it'll be done next week, but I was just seeing what the process, like you gotta, you gotta set business hours and you gotta set yourself apart um, from the client because if not, then they'll bombard on your time where, cause you don't wanna listen to that every, every single day, 24 hours a day. So it's like, I need to take a, take a break away from what I have going on and that nonsense that I was listening to at that time. Um, and just really setting hours to be able to communicate with your clients on a, on a professional basis. Um, and then I say the last thing is just figuring out how to tell stories. So even in your everyday talking, like how I told you guys about my transition through college and football, like start becoming a wizard or uh, uh, just a seamstress of storytelling. So figuring out different details that are really get people's, piques people's interest, really get details that are really take people, take people's perspective to the next level or being over dramatic or over enthusiastic about what you're talking about. Like see how you can captivate and pull people into your story. So in your conversations, because that, that all ultimately goes into videography, photography, being able to teach or pose somebody, like how hips, uh, how you would want somebody to hips to move or legs, like you have to be over enthusiastic or overly indulged. And that also happens because we talk to people on a daily basis. So learn how to communicate and tell stories about even like, you know, how was your trip to the gas station? Oh, you wouldn't believe it. So I pulled out of the driveway and I saw this amazing lime green Ferrari that rolled by and it just made me think about, so it's just like, nah, I took you there. I see the, uh, the, the lime green Ferrari riding by, you know? So be a storyteller um, in all of the conversations that you're having. Um, because one, people will, might, may be more interested in hearing what you have to say, but now too, as a professional, you're teaching uh, and learning how to have people buy in to not what it is that you're offering, but what vision is it, is it that they're really trying to create? So this is what you say you want, so let me repeat it back to you. And then it's just like, oh, I didn't even think about it that way. And it, like you're painting like a bigger picture for them. So those would be like three steps that I would tell you to go ahead and do. I know that was a little bit of a lot, but those are three steps that I would tell you to go ahead and do when starting videography or photography. Um, just really start working on being a storyteller, setting hours for yourself, and then figuring out what you want to shoot. All right. Did you have a question, KP? You good? Yeah. Go ahead. Three questions. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> no, you could. Um, I was trying to ask. When, do you use like? Do you have like your own software? Or did you create your own software or anything like that? Did you for think of, like for like when you editing and mm -hmm. doing all this stuff? Did you just think to create or do you use somebody else's stuff? Yeah, so for the editing process when creating, um, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, I just wanted to figure out a platform that helps me to tell people's story. I didn't want to build out a software that helps me to lay something on a timeline in order to like 
I just want to see what's working, what's been working for the people that I've been looking up to or aspiring to be like. Okay, what do they use? Okay, how does that work with me? Okay, maybe that's not really my stilo, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, use this other program. So I'll, uh, in editing terms, there's the top two that you could say softwares would be uh, Premiere Pro, if you've ever heard of that for any editors in here, um, and Final Cut. So I know how to use Premiere Pro, but I am so much more efficient in Final Cut. But when I get around other different professionals, they're saying, oh, you're using Final Cut and this and the third. Yeah, because it's working for me. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about what it sounds like or what I should be using. Like, I'm still knocking these clients' visions out of the park with a program that people uh, think is outdated. Which one, which one you recommend starting with? I would recommend starting with, if you have a Mac, uh, I recommend starting with Final Cut. Right now, they have a big promotion that you get, uh, I think, two or three months free uh, with Final Cut right now. Um, to go ahead and it actually has a section or you can go on YouTube but it actually has a section that teaches you and walks you through how to create your first uh, first video in uh, Final Cut but it's called Fi it's called Final Cut Pro X Final Cut. and that's if you got a Mac if that's you, if you have a Mac, Mac. if you, if you don't have, have a Mac, Mac I would recommend working with uh, Premiere Pro they also have a trial as well um, and then you can kind of go down the tiers from there but those are the top two that I would recommend um, because their trials right now are extremely efficient they're working at the professional level and just because you see a lot on there you have the capability of doing a lot in there but if you're just trying to get a visual done um, you can just go on YouTube and just say Premiere Pro for beginners it'll teach you how to drag and drop and upload a clip it'll teach you how to cut a clip and separate it um, and it'll teach you how to add transitions and fade to black just that simple and that's how you can go ahead and make a visual so I would say Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro because their trials right now are exquisite yeah, after the trial how much is it? Um, so Final Cut Pro is $300 after the uh, trial after trial and it's yours forever it's three months huh it's three months free trial it's three months free trial so you want to make some money and then it pay for itself by the time you gotta pay for it man it's right. yeah so I think the biggest thing is it's $300 I think even if you started your trial and just started saving that much money a month like it's yours forever after that and then you can update uh, over the course. So once you purchase it, Final Cut will now send you updates of their new tri or their new programs and their new software that you can just go ahead and put into your uh, software that you have currently. So $300 for that. And then Premiere, they actually have a month to month basis where you can just go ahead and pay like 50 bucks, you know, 60 bucks a month or 30 bucks a month, whatever, um, whatever your preference is or that they have on there right now. Um, and you can just go ahead and pay that off um, until it's, it's, it's paid in full. I'm not sure what the price is on it right now, but it's, gotcha. it, it's, it's really well, it's well, it's well worth it. Yes, sir. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. What camera would I recommend using right now? Just like starting off? Yeah, starting off like as far as your portfolio. Right. What kind of phone you got? <laughs> yeah. So he good with that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I, and you took it on what, your phone? I, I would love to see those afterwards. But like you have to think about it's not always the equipment that you have. Um, but what you're able to do with the equipment that you already currently own. So this, I, I was just, we were just talking about it a little bit earlier, like these phones are like, these are thousand dollar cameras. Like y'all paying month to month base to be, to be on here using social media, but this is a thousand dollar camera. A lot of people don't know, if you go into your settings, um, there's a whole section for cameras where you can change it into 4K, which is shooting like TV quality, or turn it into 240 frames per second, which is shooting slow, uh, super slow-mo instead of regular slow-mo. So like, you just have to learn what you already have at your disposal, um, and these are the settings right here, but you just have to learn what you already have at your disposal. 
Um, being able to, a lot of people, even with the photography aspect of it, a lot of people don't even know you can change your own brightness and exposure just by tapping it and then using. So it, it do the, and I, I tell my team this all the time, you do the best you can with what you have right now until you're ready to go ahead and make that investment. But there's no point in making the investment if you don't know everything there is to know about the camera that you have right now. Because then you'll get the next one and then you're probably missing out on something that you probably could have did with the older camera. And that's not $2,000 in the drain, but you're, you're overlooking the potential of maximizing what you've already had. You know what I mean? So, but yeah, start with your phone. Start with these phones. Don't, don't sleep on these phones at all. So, so the phones for picture or video? Picture or video. And so, because you have you have different attachments that you can use if right. you want to increase your audio. That's what I was gonna say. Yep. So what's what's what, so if they're doing video, what attachments would you recommend? So if you're doing video, um, some attachments that I would recommend are small portable uh, LED lights, and I can send you the links for those. I'm not sure what the name or the title of them are right uh, of them. Uh, I get them from you and make like a little checklist. Yeah, for sure. There, and I can we'll do that. Yeah, see, can but they're small, portable, you know, they have different dimmers on there where you can have it super bright or you can have it dim. Um, and what I used to do was have either one of my people would come out and they would hold the light for me and I would just talk them through like the music video. Like bring the light up higher. Okay, bring it down low. So move opposite of me when, I, when I'm moving. So if I'm going up, I want you to go down. So that's when I kind of got into my directing. But it's about what you can do with what you have already. So even if I, I used to use, I didn't have any lighting, we just used to find an empty street with a, a spotlight or a street light and we would shoot right there. Just because the light would, uh, would work well and it's hitting off of his jewelry or it's hitting off of his vehicle, like whatever the case may be, um, it's just like being creative uh, with your surroundings. And until I'm able to go ahead and make the investments and in what I want, let's see what I can do with what I have. Yep. So the lights. Lights, audio. Um, audio, the other thing would be audio. So it depends on what you're shooting as well, but I, I say lighting and audio are the two main important pieces to making a good visual. Because if you have bad audio, it's gonna make the visual look terrible. That makes sense? So if, you, if you're watching something and they're distorted and it sounds choppy and if the words, I don't like when words are off sync either, like this makes me not even wanna watch the whole video all the way through. Right. So I would recommend buying uh, a Rode mic uh, Rode is a pretty popular company. They R O D E. R O D E. Um, and that's the actual wireless mic that I'm using on the camera back there. And uh, I've used that. They sponsored me. I went to a trip to Tulum in Cancun in the heart of COVID last year. And that recap is on YouTube. I'll give y'all my YouTube in a minute. But Rode sponsored me because uh, we were talking about this, uh, talking about going out of town. And they sent me a Rode wi uh, wireless mic to utilize over the course of that trip for me to give them my honest review and to go ahead and use that over the course of the trip to see what I thought about it. And it worked out really well. Um, we use it for a lot of our events and they actually have a Rode 2 um, that's coming out right now. So I would recommend like Rode mics, shotgun mics, go on top of the cameras really nicely. Um, but Rode is a really good uh, audio quality uh, type of microphone and audio. So that wireless mic is actually connected to uh, Mark Will. What I have in my pocket, this is like a hardwired mic so this is something where I have to go back and post and I have to sync this up to what what's going on in the camera right now that makes sense okay so so just so I'm clear because you know I like to make this thing for sure. super practical for sure so anybody who want to start a video business okay. video photography business mm -hmm. pretty much all they got to have is go ahead all they got to have is a phone right they got a quality video on it yep um, if they doing video if they want photo, mm -hmm. I pretty much just need their phone. Oh, and they're yeah. pretty much in the game. Yep. And then some good lighting. Some good lighting, yep. LED uh, but like what bro said, with like shooting cars, mm -hmm. it's going to be good lighting anyway because mm -hmm. you're outside more, right. in most cases. Right. But if they want to do video, mm -hmm. a microphone. A microphone. For like, from like Rode. Mm -hmm. I think they're like 100. Yep. 150. 100, anybody, well, yep. 100, something like 150, that. yep. Uh, huh? Small yeah, yeah. Some small, small portable, portable LEDs. LEDs. <laughs> maybe about a couple, couple hundred more, maybe. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and then to edit, Maybe another three hundred or fifty dollars. Three hundred or fifty dollars a month. Real to get in the, to get in the game. So a, few, the game. so a few hundred dollars, you in the game, and then some time investing into your skill. Exactly. Watching YouTube, free YouTube videos. Free YouTube. Oh, YouTube. I call it YouTube and then University. Start, and then just start shooting some videos. Yeah. So that's YouTube. something anybody in here can do. Yeah. Within the next thirty days and have it have it up and running. And see some type of results. And, and I'm gonna so, get out them too. I'm gonna get that whole toolkit from yep. Kev with the links and everything for Amazon. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, and then we'll get we'll get it going.
figure yeah. out what we need to do to uh, help y'all get it, get it live. For sure. Uh, you had a question, Eric? And we're, real quick, for those of you who um, who be on the class, because I know we switched it this week to Wednesday versus Thursday, next week is Thursday again. Um, I know before I said next Thursday we weren't going to do the class because I was going to be traveling, mm -hmm. but I actually don't leave till Friday. So we're going to still do the class <laughs> next Thursday. Okay. So we're good, and I'll fly to Friday morning. Good. But those who be on, who, who like, who got to be on the class Wednesday with Gary, he texts me and just, just remind you that you still got to be on the class tonight at Wednesday at 7. You, still get, you got some time, but I'm just letting you know mm -hmm. in advance that he did say so make sure you let him know. <laughs> so I like, right, bet. So I just want to throw that out there. Yeah. Uh, what you at, April? Okay, so me, I'll be at home and mm -hmm. I'm on a class. Mm -hmm. um, I do need a meal plan. Okay. So, okay, so what would I use to just record my video? Would I need like a fan, a fan or something for my phone? Right. Make sure I'm in the right position. Mm -hmm. um, but what particular settings would be best? I didn't know you could alter all that mm -hmm. from my phone. Yep. So a stand for sure or a tripod, something with three legs that you can just sit up mm -hmm. on your phone. Those are Amazon. Those are Walmart. Those are, you can probably get it from a CVS, honestly. Tripods are like everywhere. Okay. Um, but yeah, something that's mobile. And then I would suggest something with a, a rotating head that you can like, maybe if I'm, I have something on the floor, I can aim it up at myself. So something with like a rotating head um, that you can just adjust your angle. But when you're talking about, a quick lesson in cameras, when you're talking about shooting with certain uh, quality or a certain type of feel or look, uh, three things that I would, or I would say two. 24 frames per second is movie quality. So it's called 24 FPS. That's what you see in theaters, that's what you see um, television most of the time, um, and I would use those for myself. I would use that for documentaries. I would use that for interviews. I would use that if I'm walking around with my cell phone, just talking to the people. 24 frames per second is movie quality or cinematic. Um, 60 frames per second. The ideal look for that is if you ever watch the news broadcasting. It looks a little bit more live in person. If you ever watch the NBA game, if you ever watch the NFL game. 60 frames per second is more of a high frame, it's called a high frame rate uh, where you're seeing more image or more quality. So the more, the higher the number, the more image or pictures are within the, those frames. So that means that I can slow this down and still see everything that's going on seamlessly. Does that make sense? So when you're watching football and they're having a super slow-mo, they're probably shooting in a thousand frames per second. You know what I mean? Um, for this camera, the highest frame rate that it can go is 60 frames per second. So it'll be a smooth slow-mo, but it's nothing, you know, super extravagant or super, super layered. 60 plus is good for slow-mo or any or B-roll. I use all my B-roll shots 60 frames or higher. Um, another camera, I think the highest camera, the cell phone has a, a high, the highest frame rate that a cell iPhone that I know that can, it can go. The highest frame rate that an iPhone can go is 240 frames. And that looks really good. That looks really good. So, so 24 frames if you're doing interviews or if you're talking to yourself or, you, um, or if you're doing a performance footage or performance of someone, I would say 24 frames. Any type of B-roll would be 60 frames or higher. And let me ask you all a question real quick. I got you. So for those of you who are interested in like video and photography, who, who would like be interested if I convinced Kev to do like a video class <laughs> where he like show y'all the whole game. Would y'all appreciate that? <laughs> All right, so I talked to bro sideline, figure out we gotta yeah. check, I gotta cut him yeah, yeah, yeah. to get um mm -hmm. to make that happen. But we we'll get that done though. <laughs> what what you have, April? Okay, um I'm looking on it. I can went into my settings, but mm -hmm. you said it was in here. So I do see where it is in twenty-four frames mm -hmm. per second. There we go. It says 4K, what is it? So four K is basically a higher quality of video, mm -hmm. so yeah, four K. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, everything, you, yeah. everything you watch on TV now is most in, in most cases four K. Four K. Yep. Yeah, so that's like TV yep. quality. Yep. Mm -hmm. And the reason that you would one of the biggest reasons that you would use four K is in editing. If we ever wanted to like push in or zoom in in editing, so you know on a, on your actual camera you would zoom in manually on, on your camera, but in editing it's called keyframing, where you would zoom in uh, or yeah, just zoom in uh, in in your editing process. So what 4K does, it allows you to zoom in without losing too much quality. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I zoomed in, normally what you were, we're used to shooting uh, 1080. So if I zoomed in too much in 1080, my picture quality would start to be distorted. Mm, exactly. 
Exactly. Yeah, exactly. 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 You will. So 4K, um, it takes up a considerable, much uh, larger amount of space by shooting 4K. So it's collecting more data to be seen. So it's like now if I inch in, oh, that still looks good. If I inch in, so that, that's, how, that's basically what 4K is doing. So it's a lot more data that's uh, in a file. Uh, but 1080 is a more of a standard file. If you zoom in, you can't zoom in too much because if you zoom in too much, you'll start depleting your quality. Okay, so 4K is good, especially if you have the, uh, the memory on your phone. Are you good? <laughs> Androids. I got an Android too. Yeah, yeah. So I would, I would, if you go to your settings, um, you go to camera. There we go. Video quality. What is it? We got one, um, I mean 1080. 1080. 1080. So. Yep. So the smaller, the so 1080, 720, what 480, 360. So basically, the smaller the video quality, the less data is being captured. But this would be good for if you were just sending a text message to somebody. Um, it's not going to take up too much space. If you wanted to send a quick promo video to somebody, um, normally, like with our my final videos or the revision or the review video, I don't send it in full quality. If I'm sending it via, you know, emails don't allow you to take up too much or uh, send it with a lot of space. Uh, text messages, it, it'll uh, junk up your cell phone if you send it over like that. So I send it not in full quality or 1080 uh, or in 4K. Um, but I don't normally export in 4K. I'll shoot it in 4K, and then I'll export it or print it out. I'll export it in uh, 1080. That makes sense? So 1080 is a good start, even if you even if 1080 is a good start. The phones naturally shoot start at 1080. Got it. Yep. And then you just upgrade as you upgrade as you if you need it. A lot of people, like, I don't, I don't. Most people don't, don't even know anyway. Right. But it's because exactly. it's still high quality, as long as you're right, as long as exactly. your lighting right, your audio right. Yeah, and you good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For and sure. And as you start making money, you just reinvest. In exactly. Mm -hmm. So like, you don't got to start with like, what's that? A Canon? Yep, Canon. That's you a Canon like, 80D. You start with the Canon. Mm -hmm. Then you just make some money. Then you might go get the Canon. Yeah. 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 Because I, I will, I I can invest in a three hundred to five hundred dollar camera, and probably shoot in the same quality as a ten thousand dollar camera, because I know my lighting. Lighting is extremely important. When shooting, uh, when shooting your visuals, so if your lighting is bad, it's you know you don't set the tone, you don't have any feel. Uh, this side is dark, and you know they cast, it's a shadow that's casted. Now you're seeing all the chins and everything like that. Like it, it doesn't. Ma I, don't, I won't say it doesn't matter, but your your key point is to understand your lighting and what type of look and feel you're going for. But you can shoot it, like I say, with your cell phone on a tripod and just press record. But as long as your lighting is right. You in the game. You in the game. Yep. Yep. And I, even for weddings, um, if I'm shooting a wedding outside, one thing that I always had to take into consideration is Mother Nature and a cloud going by. Mm -hmm. and like I, like I, feel like I got a sixth scent for like nature now by shooting outside, um, because it's like I have to feel. If, even if I don't notice or see the cloud go over the, uh, the sun, I have to feel like. Okay, it's a little bit chillier. Or I have to bump my settings up or have more brightness into my camera because now there's a cloud that was covering that setting. So when the sun comes back out, I start memorizing my numbers. That's when you start really getting into the game. You start memorizing your numbers and you know exactly what to jump back to. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Um, my son plays sports, so he does like highlight tape mm -hmm. for his teammates. But I can't convince him for the world to like charge them. Mm -hmm. Charge them. Really? Yeah, he, I mean, like, he sit there and edit on his Mac. I'm like, mm -hmm. dude. Yeah. First of all, that wasn't free, but he didn't pay for it. But right. The fact is, like, you could be getting money. Yeah. Like, why? It only took me, like, 10 minutes. Mm hmm. Yeah, and that's good. Uh, that's, that's good that he's efficient in that sense. Because I actually started doing highlight tapes. I started doing highlight tapes. And um, it's something that is a, not a quick flip, but it's, it's a convenient way. If you, know, if you know about the sport that you're shooting, um, it's a convenient way to go ahead and really make some money. Because I know what looks good, I know, I know what plays to take out, and I know what to keep in there uh, for coaches to look at, scouts to look at, and different things like that, or to make it pop. So for him, I would just really just talk to him and ask him, um, you know, do you feel like your videos aren't worth it? Like, like you, don't, you don't feel like... And I used to do the same thing. So I, it's just like, 
Jackson. May, I think he might be, a, I can't, I won't speak for him for myself. It was, when it was free, it was all good. When I put a price on it, that's when the people started to back off. So it's just like, what are you really doing it for? Because I, and when I found out my worth in myself, like I'm super dope and I can start putting a hundred dollars per highlight tape on this. Uh, Cause I'm getting them done efficiently. I'm getting them done accurately. And I'm getting them done to the satisfaction. Like I'm, I'm shooting above and beyond what you even thought it was going to come out of this. So it's just like, and I'm dope. I need to start charging for this. Now the free videos he was getting, it's just like, oh, well, I ain't got it, man. You know, I just, uh, you know, uh, I, I get with you. But if you ever want to come by and shoot something else, you know, just let me know. So it's just like, you'll start seeing the worth, but you have to see why he's doing it. Um, so I was doing it for me at first, but then when I, like I said, start coming into my worth, it's just like, well, now price tag needs to be put on this at this point. Yep. Thank you. Is it, me a better outlook. Mm -hmm. Is it a hundred dollars like going right for a highlight tape? Uh, anywhere from uh, 75 to 150. That's ain't cheap. On the low end, yeah, this is on the low end. That's ain't cheap. It's so like there, work, there's a, a bus tour, it's called Rising Stars Bus Tour, and I was doing this every single year since I got out of college. I, my first year, and this was like 2013, um, 2012 or something like that, I got out of college and uh, I was doing highlight tapes for like 75 bucks, and it was like, you know, 40 kids. Um, that's a lot of work in the editing room by yourself. Um, because I think one thing you have to take into consideration with videographers and photographers is that we take our work home with us. So once we're done shooting, like the work is still uh, to be configured. So um, I started amping up my price. It was like 75, and then it went to 100, then 125, then 150. And then where I'm at now, I'm like, yeah, I need 300 a kid. Like I, I can get it done, but now kids are getting scholarships off of my videos. There are scouts and coaches on subscribing to my YouTube page just to see who I'm putting on here at this point. So the value has skyrocketed. I'm not only providing a good highlight or resume for you, I'm getting you exposure by now these coaches that are following my pages. So it's just like, if you don't see that, you, if you don't see a $300 investment versus, you know, four, five years of college, we, we, you might have to have another conversation. So it's, it, it, it began, it, it starts with that, when you start seeing your worth and you have to write it down on paper. It's like, man, the Michigan State coach just followed me. Uh, Ohio State coach just followed me. I'm just like, wow, I need to be careful what I put up here now. And you take all of that into consideration and that all d it goes into the development of your price and your worth. So just really just start taking that into consideration. Just what is he doing it for? That's, that's one. What do you like to shoot? He likes to shoot this, but like now it's time consuming. What are you really doing it for? And what's the what's the bigger ticket play? So you so it's 175 to 150 for a highlight reel. Right. What's like some bigger ticket play? So like an event. So for a so we used to do like a camp, like a or just in general. Just in general. So like what what are some other opportunities? So for example, if you go shoot some content for a day with mm -hmm. an influencer, or if you go shoot a music video, or if you go shoot a wedding, or shoot some mm -hmm. other type of event, like what are, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so now it's gotten to a point now where like. Cause I know, cause I'm, let me just kind of give you some content. Yeah. So I know for me, mm -hmm. if I was doing, I'm like, all right, cool. What can I do maybe once a week to go make two or three grand per play? Right, right. What is something that you can do once so a week? So I can go shoot, let's say for example, if we say, all right, all right, you do, you uh, a rapper or yep. aspiring rapper. Yep. All right, I'm gonna come to your hood and shoot your content. I'm gonna follow you around for a day mm -hmm. or for two days, mm -hmm. get all that film, chop it all up for yep. you, give it back to you, your raw footage and like a recap, mm -hmm. and I want 2,500. Mm -hmm. And you do that four times a month. Right, good to go. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what I'm thinking, like, how can they work them type of plays? Right, so. like if you do 7,500, it's cool. Right. But it's like. Yeah. For sure. How can I, how can we max, how can we be more efficient? Exactly. <laughs> so, and, so we've been talking a lot, a lot about video, so we'll transition over into photo a little bit um, because you can do, um, for anyone that's doing lifestyle, like they like their photos to look bright or like they like to be followed around, shown doing and interacting. Um, so photo shoots, like you have to understand, like not your worth in time, like how much is it, $25 an hour or 50 or 100? You have to understand how much content are you providing them over the course of time um, and the value. So, for example, 
one of my young, young ladies that's on my team, she does photography, and she's now starting to charge $250 uh, an hour just to shoot. So that's just the shooting rate. And normally it would just be that. That would just be what it, when you're done, that comes with the edits. But it's just like, well, now what do you plan on doing with the content? Oh, so you want content that stretches over the course of time. So you're, now you're asking for a variety. Because a lot of people just think that they want photos, but they're trying to get like all oh, these different wardrobes. Now wardrobe, that's like a, maybe one week or two weeks or one month or two months worth of content. Different poses and different atmospheres or different backgrounds. So it's just like now, um, we are able to, and we're starting to talk to her now, where now it's like anywhere from 1200 to 1500 per photo shoot. Per photo shoot. And, um, you know, I don't even think she even understood that she can charge that much for a photo shoot. But you're, you're not thinking for that shoot. You're thinking longevity-wise. Like, what do you see yourself ut utilizing this content for? Yeah. So when she, start, when she started to see the longevity in content, that's where she wasn't trying to get quick money anymore. 250, 150 bucks, like for an hour or two. It's like, now you do this on a, I guess, semi-monthly uh, basis. You know, that's that's reoccurring revenue. That's yep. 1,500, 2,500, and that's that's a returning client. Bingo. That's why that's why that's when that marketing come in handy, and you being able to uh, um, explain mm -hmm. what you do and how the, what's the benefit of the person. Because yeah. let's say, say for, let's say for example, you get let's say you charge two thousand a month for a retainer, and cool. basically a retainer is somebody paying you every month. Mm -hmm. So let's say you pay two thousand a month every week. You pull up, you shoot their videos for them, so they got their content for the week. Mm -hmm. You do that every week. They pay you two thousand a month. You get five people doing that. You making ten thousand dollars a month, and you're only working with five clients. And then you hire you hire some people, teach them how to do it. Then you go get you t five more clients, yep. and you ain't even servicing them cl them clients. Yep. Now you're making twenty thousand a month, or maybe fifteen thousand, but you're paying the squad mm -hmm. to go out and shoot. Yep. Then you get you five more clients, mm -hmm. and then you see what I'm saying, and then it just multiply, <laughs> yep. and then before you know it, you got what's that? Five times ten, you got about fifty clients a month. You only servicing your top clients yep. who paying you more, mm -hmm. and then you got your other squad out there working. Now you're making a hundred thousand dollars a month, so you're making one point two million dollars a year. Mm -hmm just off like 50 clients yeah. and you ain't even doing the majority of the shoot no. yeah. but you just start and then just bubble it up yeah. and 2000 a month for a retainer is pretty sweet i mean anytime we hire a brother it's a comma mm -hmm. so he ain't never been like all right just shoot me a hundred and we're gonna come through it's like yeah. it's always a comma every single time mm -hmm. and we hire him regularly and, I was so, about to, and that's just understanding your time too yeah. um i didn't i understood my time was valuable but you know, my brother back there started understanding, like, you have to understand the data that goes into it. Um, like, what is your time worth? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, can you afford to be here this long? Yep. I'm like, whoa, what are you yeah. saying to me? Like, I don't, I, yep. okay, all right, I, I get it, but I never thought about it that way. Because if you jump so quick on a $100 play, oh. you saying no to a $2,000 play mm -hmm. or a $5,000 play, you see what I'm saying? Just yep. so you jumped on the quick money so fast. Exactly. You ain't thinking like, I really, for this same hour, I could go make two thousand yeah. versus over oh, making a hundred. Yeah, like, you see what it. I'm saying? Yeah. So you gotta it. be like, this is situation. I'm a premium <laughs> service. Yeah. Even no matter how long you've been doing it, you're like, my service is premium. I'm gonna come through, make sure it's a one. Yep. I'm gonna make sure you're editing on point. Mm -hmm. The trick, the trick is this: we done hired a whole bunch of videographers and the photographers over the years before we met Kevin and, and like most videographers and photographers, they take forever to get you your stuff. They take forever to get you your video stuff. I don't know if y'all ever hired a photographer, videographer. Mm -hmm. They take forever to get you your stuff. And then when you finally get it, it ain't right. <laughs> then you got to yes. send back the revisions, and then it yeah. still ain't right. Bro, like, you probably in the spirit. You know what I'm talking about. So it's like, it's crazy. So what I'm saying is, if you decide to go this path, make sure you A1. And then, because like when we hired, bro, when, I, when we first hired him, before we left the venue, he already was like, hey, let me shoot you these pictures right now so you got something to work with. Yeah. And then give me seven days, and I had you the rest of your content. And like four days, he had us everything. Mm -hmm. So we were like, okay, we got people we didn't hire three years ago, and this content we still ain't got back. Mm -hmm. So if y'all gonna do it, mm -hmm. make sure all you, if you come a one, you can charge whatever you want to charge mm -hmm. because they like, yeah, you can go get somebody else and do it for a hundred. But what you gonna have to deal with? You yeah. pay us twenty five hundred. We're gonna make sure your stuff. We're gonna tell you seven days, but yep. it's gonna be to you in four days, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be a one, and it's gonna be this, and it's gonna be that, and it's yep. gonna be that. So it's the, it's the experience, too. Yeah. Like, you go to Louis, 
They're going to sit you down, give yep. you champagne, make sure you're good. You go to Foot Locker, you might not be able to get no help. Right. When you go to Walters, you're like, hey, can somebody help me? But you go to Louis, they're like, sit down right here, we get you some champagne. What you mm -hmm. want? What you want? You good? You want your mm -hmm. back rub? You know, whatever you want, just to make you good, straight up. So, so just think about that. How can you make an amazing service, and then you can easily charge whatever you want to charge? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, oh, like I just came back in town from Vegas, and like I got my GoPro back there because I wanted something like a little bit more, a little bit smaller than my phone. Um, that shot at the same quality. So I think I was shooting for another client, but in the midst of that time, I was able to go ahead and create and make my own content on the side. So one thing that I can tell everyone that they can do um, is what is, we call it our W3 method. You talk about who you are, where you at right now, and what do you have going on. You do, this is the W3 method. You talk about who you are, where you at, and what do you have going on right now. So I was like, yo, 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 what's going on? It's Cutting Kev. I'm out here in Las Vegas right now shooting with a client. Uh, but I wanted to hop on here really quick and just talk to you about uh, how we help service our clients to go ahead and scale their content to the next level. How to go ahead and uh, create compelling content and turn that into cash. So if you'd like to know more about how we're doing this out here in Las Vegas or wherever you're, uh, wherever you're located right now, uh, swipe up, click the link in my bio, and schedule your call today. Boom. Like you, you just have, you have unlimited content. So it's just like, I catch my next flight. Hey, uh, I don't care if I'm on my way back home. It's just like, people love to see you in motion. And that's what you have to, like, I was robbing my followers of that. And I still don't post as consistently as I'm about to get ready to do so. But it's just like, I've now created a method where just creating content should be nothing like, it should just only be you talking about your day and talking about your story. And what do you want people to do as a result? So that, that's that call to action. Like, what do you want people to do? Swipe up. Click the link in the bio, or uh, go check out our free gift that we have here. Or like, what are you, what are you telling them to do? So anytime that you post a video um, and you don't give them direction, you're you're losing out on an opportunity for a sale or for a conversation that can lead to that. So you have to be careful on posting content uh, without any direction on what to do, what to do next. That's that's a missed opportunity. Real quick, let's do maybe one or two questions. Cause I know a few of you gotta go. Okay. Uh, anybody else got any last questions? Or oh, if not, I got some. Okay. Yes. Let's do like let's do two more. Cause I know some people gotta go. Okay. How does this editing thing work? Is that a long question? That's a long one. That's a, that's an interesting. So go, that's so an interesting go, question. Go to, so go yeah. to go to YouTube. So what you say? Go to YouTube and look at what? Um. You, oh. What's well, the I mean, call, like what what what's so it depends on the tool you're gonna use. Yeah, right? I was about to say you have to figure out an app. If you're editing on your phone, you can always edit on your phone. One uh, one editing app I recommend on your phone is called InShot. Yep, it's free. InShot. N-I-N yep. Shot. Okay. Yep. Yep. Good editing. You can slap a clip in there, cut the clip up, um, put some transitions on it, fade in, fade out. You can put some music on, underneath it. Yep. Um, you know, and I, I, you can go to YouTube and you can look though look that up. It's basic editing. Yep. Basic editing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, you put little brother work and you shoot the video. He do the editing. Boom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he just told me. <laughs> <laughs> you only gotta learn that. You do the content. What you got, MJ? Uh, what are, do you know any apps you can use for computers? From uh, from your computer to edit. Any apps you can use? Uh, oh, so Final Cut. Well, that's only for the newer Macs, but um, they have a Premiere Pro app on your phone. Uh, I haven't utilized it. I haven't utilized it, but it does have does have the. I can't give you all the specifics, but from the looks of it, it has the essential basics. But you have to pay fifty to that. You have to pay that same price that you would pay for the actual program. So Premiere, so Premiere Pro, Pro for PC. For uh, PC. No, it, so it's one, one login, and you can use that on your phone. You can use that on your computer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. By PC, do you mean Windows too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Anybody else? All right, cool. You got some, bro? You good? So look, this is what we're going to do, because I know some people got to go. So this is what we're going to do for next week. So next week, we're going to do it a little bit different, because I know, uh, first off, give bro a hand. Give bro a hand. Give bro a hand. Give bro a hand. You said it, brother? Was that, was that, was that, was that helpful? Was that helpful? Yeah. Any closing yeah. remarks, bro? Huh? Any closing remarks, Kel? Uh Closing remarks. Um, one thing that I live by, and I talk to my team, and I tell them this, this like weekly, um, is our 3D effect is your decisions determine your destination. So make the decision um, to do what you said you were gonna do. 
um, decide. Uh, my mother always told me that um, the, have the determination to be able to go ahead and see it through, um, and then I ultimately go ahead and put you at the destination that you want to be at. Bet, bet, bet. Give him a hand, give him a hand. So look, this, since I see that, that's a big yeah, interest. Yeah, so, appreciate so it, two brother. things I see the big interest. Clothing, you're doing a clothing brand, and photography and video. It seems like it's a big interest in that as well. So we're going to probably just do some like specific classes just on those um, to help do that. I'm going to get with Kelvin and like the editing yep. and like what you need to work with and all that, and we'll figure out a location where we're going to do that. We might do it here more work. We figure out with Gary what we need to do yeah. and get with Gary to figure out what we got to put together to make that happen. Oh, yeah. So this is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to do next week. Um, and I'm going to give you all, so we got this, I, I explain this in a minute. But what we're going to do next week, because I know everybody kind of got individual, individual businesses, right? So the mobile mechanic business, the barber, the clothing line, the list goes on. So what we're going to do next week is we're going to do our best I'm going to think through it over the next week. So we're going to do our best to kind of break out in like little individual workshop situations. So now, based on where you are in your business, we'll figure out like what area you in. So like what, what parts you stuck on, and then we'll come around and then like work with you on your individual thing. So that way, whatever you, so let's say for example, I know one of the people who left, he working on his logo. So I gave him a resource to find, figure out his logo. So by the time he come back next week, he had been to figure out his logo situation already. So you may be working on your name, you may be working on your marketing, you may got like specific questions and you may not want to ask in front of everybody for whatever reason, right? So we're going to do like some individual work, workshop situation. So we'll break out maybe like four people over here who are interested in this, four people over here, and then we'll break it out and then we'll just kind of work around the room and then work with you individually on what you got going on. Or we may do something where we just have hot seats and you come up one by one and then we work with you individually on your specific thing. Would y'all think that'd be helpful for anybody? Just work on your specific thing with this specific time? So whatever ideas you got, whatever you feel like you stuck on, make sure you bring that bit back next week, and then we'll work on that. Any questions? I got questions. Was this helpful? Yes. Sir. This is what I'm gonna do real quick for y'all go. So we got this thing called Men That Vocabulary. MJ mad because we ain't do the game this week. Normally we do a game. We well, ain't mad. A oh, good. So normally we do a game. And we break out in teams, and then whoever team win, we do some cash. But I ain't wanna. I ain't wanna do. I ain't wanna do it this week because. Shh, 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 we'll talk in a minute. We'll talk in a minute. We're talking a minute. I don't want to embarrass you in front of everybody. Calm down. So what we do is we normally give out cash to whoever win, right? So, but I ain't want to do it this week because most of y'all, a lot of y'all are new. So it wouldn't really be fair for real because y'all don't really know the words. So we're going to give y'all, we're going to get y'all all the new words, but I got this week words so y'all can start working on the words. Because me and that, the reason is me and that vocabulary, because me and that have a different type of vocabulary. So they know certain words. So you need to know certain words, especially when you're doing um, negotiations for your business and all that good stuff. So it's 13 this week. And then for those of you who don't got the other ones, I'm going to give you all my number. You text me and I'm going to send you the other words as well. Is that cool? Perfect. So you going to pass them out for me? Uh, yeah. Okay. Here. You can pass some out for me real quick. Do it quick. I know someone got to go. All right. Why are they passing these out real quick? Let me, let me get some of you because I know somebody got to get out of here. Can I pass them out? Yeah. You can pass them out. Here you go, bro. You good? Here. Pass them out. All right, you out? Okay, you come back next week. So next, next is next week. It's Thursday at four forty-five. We right here. All right. Any questions? Any questions? Any questions before we get out of here? Any questions before we get out of here? Any questions? Oh wait, I I did my homework. You did your homework? Oh yeah, we forgot forgot about the homework. Let me in. Bring, bring it back next week, and we're going to talk about it, because I want you to share it. Okay. Tim, when you ready?